I think we have the perfect crew here for this discussion. Okay, for this discussion. Because Sam is an Iowa guy. Mm-hmm. Thus the name, Iowa Sam. Like literally <laughs> a walking encyclopedia and fanboy of all things Iowa, with the exception of Iowa's football offense, which will change this this football season, correct? Some people, though, have associated me with Iowa State, and I have to say, hey, no, I'm from Iowa City, born and raised there, and I went to, I'm went. i an alum of the University of Iowa, so I am black and gold Iowa Sam. Here. Black and gold, yeah. black and yellow, black and yellow, yes, and that's yes. Pittsburgh. Okay, and then Jay Stu, who basically calls BS on everybody, kind of hates everybody, but it's because he sees through the phoniness in so many people. Is that a fair depiction of it? Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't hate anybody, but I, I will be critical of things. He's not easily impressed. Oh, also good. Okay, and then Monsi, who that's a good description. I like that there, one. There's several different parts to why Monsi, obviously being a woman, and this is about women in sports, and but it's also about like when you're new to cover something, on how how I, I'm going to guess Monsi, like when you co-host a show with Alex Curry on weekends, mm-hmm. right? Um, because it's too. Uh, because because you're women, mm-hmm. you're always, I don't know if you feel compelled or pushed to always talk about things having to do with women and always take the woman's side, right? It's like, I'll give you a snapshot. When you're Jewish, like, do you always have to take the Jewish side? Like, yeah, I can have my own. Like, not every, I don't agree with everything. Is yeah. that fair? I think I'm more that I, I do want to talk about women Maybe not as much that I take their side just automatically, but okay. I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Yes. So have you guys, I, 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 I would guess that most of us have watched some part of Caitlin Clark here, especially recently she, when she's broken through records. Um, now they're playing in the NCAA tournament and the Monday night game, which first time in my life ever, I was at a bar and I was like, Hey, can you put the Iowa game on? And he's like, nice. And I was like, no, the Iowa women's game on, put it on. And everybody like turned around. So there's a couple things going on here at once. It was the highest rated game on cable over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And why that matters. It it, look, it's a little bit skewed because though the men's tournament is on cable. Okay. One it's with exception of the, First game, I think Saturday. The the cable games are when there's multiple, usually multiple games going on. And let's be honest, between TBS and TNT, but especially TBS and True TV, those are not traditional um, landing spots for sports viewers. ESPN is. In addition to which, that highly rated game was on Monday. It was running unopposed. There's no Major League Baseball that matters as of yet. There's no NFL football. There's no college football. There's no men's uh, men's NCAA tournament. There were NBA games, okay, but not on ESPN and not on TNT at the time. So there's a little skewing of the numbers, but the basic elements to it are people are infatuated with the Caitlin Clark story. And if you want to be in denial of all the different layers of it, fine. Okay. Does the fact that sh- that, that, that she's playing at Iowa, which has been a good program for a long time, but I had no idea it was a good program. I, again, Sam, did you? You're an Iowa guy. Did you know that they've been good for a long time? Yes, I mean Lisa Bluter has had uh, you know really great players in the past. No one le- rising to the level of profile of Caitlin Clark, but Can you Megan name Gust- one player. Megan Gustafson was the player of the no year idea. of the Big Ten. <laughs> if Noah Gustafson, and, and not, she floats around the WNBA. I'm, she's I'm got not, a cute little corgi. Listen, I'm not. She was a she was a goat at Iowa before Caitlin I'm, Clark. I'm sure she was great. Okay, I'm not trying to defame her in any way. I'm just saying if Megan Gustafson sat down next to me, I and she was like. I'm the gr- well. I wouldn't think she's the greatest WNBA player because I just know the Brianna Stewarts of the world, right? And those, mm-hmm. that level. But if she sat down next to me. I would, I had no idea who she is. And I've covered sports again. There's just only so much in my personal um, DVR, if you will, that I can kind of recall. So she's brought attention to the sport. I think. I think all the different elements of it: the fact that she stayed at one school, the fact that she's in the Midwest, where there's a, there's a little bit of pushback of everything else going on in the world in the Midwest kind of works i think the fact that she shoots from distances only previously seen by uh, steph curry right in the men's game the men's college game i think all of those elements work and because of it and be obviously the numbers and then oh yeah let's not undersell they won a lot they got to the championship game last year taking down south carolina who was the odds-on favorite 
right? So it's not just that she's put, Pistol Pete Maravich put up numbers. He didn't win anything. Nothing. Now, it was a smaller field for the NCAA tournament. They didn't win anything. So all of those elements, but what's happened is, and this there's a little bit of the Hillary Clinton campaign for president, where what her campaign team would do, if you were critical in any way of her, it would be your chauvinist. Like, well, every politician, we're critical of every politician. You know? Why can't we be critical? If you were critical of Hillary Clinton, and again, full disclosure, I voted for Hillary. I'm just going to be, you know, I voted for her. But it was, I thought it was, um, it was very transparent what they were doing. To avoid certain criticism, they would just put the criticism in a box of, well, you wouldn't ask that to a male candidate. I bring that up because Caitlin Clark recently has been caught on TV with a potty mouth. Okay. And there have been other women's basketball players who have done the same. There's a young woman who's really talented at Stanford. Um, Spencer, what's her first name? Um, and when she fouled out, she turns to the ref and says, F you while walking by. And, and this is kind of the response that we've ended up, we've ended up getting. And this is kind of where we are as people. There's a guy named David Eichholt. So David covers all things Iowa. All right, little cottage industry, guys that are ultimate insiders, huge fans, mile model Oklahoma State. We got a couple of them. Every, all, every big sports program has people that cover it, know it, love it. But he had a tweet going back to yesterday, which uh, he and I got in a little bit of a Twitter beef over, where he said, Weird to see people get so upset about Angel Reese, Cameron Brink. Cameron Brink, excuse me, is the woman. Yes. She's the woman at Stanford, Cameron Brink. Caitlin Clark and other female attitudes, female players swearing and showing some attitude. It's high level athletics. It's what makes it more fun. We need more of it. Nobody says a word of it. If a dude does it, let him be. I call bullcrap. I call bullcrap. And David, I don't know how old you are. I understand that you're sitting there and you think people are taking shots at at Caitlin Clark because that's what we do as a society. We build people up and then we knock them down. But that's not the reality here. Okay, If you really know Hawkeye basketball, you'll know of a guy named Chris Kingsbury. Chris Kingsbury was one of the great shooters in the history of high school basketball. And when he went to Iowa, he would take crazy shots playing for uh, Dr. Tom Davis. But he did a lot of dirty stuff punching dudes when nobody was looking, a lot of dirty stuff. And actually, I think got suspended for a game when he punched a kid. I think it was from Penn State, and it was only in the highlights at SportsCenter that found it. And when that tape rolled, he was suspended the next game. The And again, she's not punching anybody. But we were constantly, and I was playing at the time, people were on him about his attitude and theatrics. I mentioned Baker Mayfield, right? Baker Mayfield they were taking cheap shots at him and wouldn't shake his hand against Kansas. And he was on the sideline in a game in which they came back and won and he just grabbed his nuts. Right? And grabbing your nuts is the exact same thing as telling somebody to F off or F you. It's the same. Different different gestures, same meaning. We all know it. And people have lost their mind. Hell, um, Caleb Williams has a pink phone and paints his nails and social media acts like he's gay because of it. Again, your behaviors get magnified when you're somebody we're paying attention to. Now, again, I have no problem with Caleb Williams painting his fingernails. My only point is that anybody who's super popular, we're paying more attention to. You know you're paying more attention to. So your behavior is going to be sliced and diced regardless of whether you're a man or a woman, you're black or you're white. And here's the problem, David. You're like, when the men do it, show me a guy in college basketball in the NCAA tournament that has been caught on camera dropping an F-bomb and telling people to shut the F up. Show me a guy who walked by a ref during a game and said F you to the ref and lived to say it. Talk about it. They don't. It doesn't happen. So here's the problem that we all have. And yes, I'm going to lay this at your feet, Monsi. <laughs> 
because you're the woman mm-hmm. is women have said forever. Hey, all we want is equal, right? We're playing basketball. It's a 94 by 50. All right. The line has been a little different. The ball's a little different, but we want to be judged, valued the same. Okay. And as I pointed out earlier in the year, the TV value and ESPN probably got a deal based upon the numbers they're doing now, but the TV value is 65 million a year for women's basketball and all the rest of the Olympic sports to ESPN. The TV value financially based upon TBS and CBS's deal, which is like three, four years old was $750 million per year, right? That that's actually equal because you're paid based upon what they can make on it. What the assumed value is. That's the open market. But in this particular case, if you want to be judged as equal, those behaviors are reprehensible. And again, it doesn't mean that I don't ever, she doesn't, she needs to be sent to the gulag. It doesn't mean we need to wash her mouth out with soap. This is how easy it is. You pull her aside and you're like, hey, I get it. You're playing with a ton of emotion, but you got to cut out the F-bombs, the giant, just go play. Do you know how I know that? Because that's what every men's coach says to every player. And if you think that we're being unfair because they're a woman, they're not supposed to act that way. Dude, um, uh, what's the name? Marshall, uh, Marshall Henderson. Do you guys remember Marshall Henderson? Hey, Marshall Henderson played at a couple of schools, ended up at Ole Miss and played for Andy Kennedy and led the SEC in scoring. And he was a hot button topic because he was constantly yapping to the, the fans and yelling at other people and talking a bunch of trash. And we made a big deal of his behavior. And Andy Kennedy had to like pull him aside like, yo, dude, I don't want you to lose that edge, but we can't have you like challenging fans to a fight. That doesn't work. If you want to be judged and evaluated the same, and that's what David's saying. David Eichel is sitting there going, hey, man, guys do this. One, no, they don't. And two, when they do, their coach or somebody important pulls them aside. Is like, what are you doing? You know who's doing that for Caitlin Clark? Who? Her, Her father. Yeah. Brent Clark. He's openly on in the stands when she's whining to the officials. Yeah, just saying, hey, stop. And then I got to say, I cringe and winced a little bit when she was yelling, let's F and, or, you know, uh, shut the F up to people. And I don't know if that was to her who detractors. Knows, who knows who it's That was just a it. fiery outburst that she didn't even think about. I, I got like, but dude, it, looked, I, it was a bad look. I, and, I agree. And, and, and I want to make sure, that, I hope people understand. Okay. I was a super emotional basketball player and I lived and thrived on that emotion. And as I grew, I would say that I probably went the other way and re- forever regret it. Like I played with an edge and so many people came to me and were like, dude, you know, it's the emotions. That's what's causing your shooting to be off is you're just too emotional. And I didn't, I like, I didn't feel like I was me. So I understand you don't want to lose that edge. You just don't, but there's a limit. Everybody knows like, Is that what you really want? Like, listen, we can sit here and make fun of the fact that people say it's about the kids, but literally she's the most popular women's basketball player in sports, right? Female athlete right now in America. She has a ton of pressure on her as well. She does. And so I understand like you're feeling that ton of pressure. She's letting the valve open a little bit. Right. Great. Okay. But, but the point is she scored half the team's points. You have to be able to process that and it's okay to be critical of that. You're not saying she's a bad human. You're not saying that she's, you know, any of the negative terms you can use about a woman. What you're saying is if we're viewing you as a high level athlete, as a fun watch and important for women in sports, then damn it, you better act like it. And she wants to be because you're acting like an absolute child, just like her, like uh, uh, any of these coaches who watch it think the same thing. But again, and then here's the secondary and probably the biggest problem is when I'm critical, I'm a chauvinist. I hate women's basketball. Uh, what else is it? Um, I don't like Iowa. I don't know why I wouldn't like Iowa. Love Anti-Midwest Iowa. bias. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm a coastal elite. That's the coastal elite, right? All of those things. When the reality is, we would be having this exact same discussion if it was Baker Mayfield, if it was Jimmer Fredette, if it was... Uh, uh, oh, what's the kid's name? Dalton Connect. Okay, Dalton Connect is not as big a name as Caitlin Clark, but having a crazy good season, a transfer from Northern Colorado, playing at Tennessee, they played this weekend. If Dalton Connect was was complaining about every call and saying, shut the F up to anybody in particular, we'd be like, yo, 
What is Rick doing? It Rick rubs Vaughn. you the wrong way. It's just not needed. It's not not part of the sport, especially college sports. It's just not. Okay, Monty, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've, I've gone too long. No, you're, yeah, you have said a lot, and I have a lot of things. Let's see what I can remember here. I agree with you 100% that she is fair game to criticize when she reacts like that, and so is anybody playing in the NCAA tournament, whether it's female or man. I agree. Be critical. It doesn't matter. Be fair. But... It's it, 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 it's not fair. There's like so many times where, and I'm going outside. See, I think you're trying to funnel this in into just college hoops or just college. When in reality, it it can't be just that. It does funnel into professional sports. For example, in tennis, every single time a female tennis player loses her mind and breaks her her racket, she's emotional. But if a guy does it, it's like, oh no, he's just that's really, bull. Let me right. prove it to you. No, let me that's prove not. It. No, 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 this is really quick, really, really easy. What's the what's the Greek guy's name? Um, super talented. He talks. He he jars with the, the jars whole with the the car, crowd a lot. What, Woman's drunk. Name? Yeah, yeah. God, what what is the the, the he's a male Kyrgios. tennis player, huh? Uh, Kyr, uh, Kyrgios. Kyrgios. You know who he is? Yes. Okay. Are you sure he's Greek? I didn't know he was Greek. I thought he's he was Greek. Australian. Uh, I I'm pretty sure he's Greek. Curious, yeah. But anyway, dude. He's basically been run out of the sport because of his theatrics. Right, but it's also the exact same thing. Of of tennis, okay. he's been critical. Give me another one. Okay, another one. We see LeBron James complain to the ref every single day yeah. for years and years and years, and it's just acceptable. Nobody says he's emotional. Nobody. It's just like, oh, he can do it. Like I, I think Wait, it's, people aren't critical of LeBron James. Look, people are critical of, Le- uh, of LeBron James all the time, but he just not does cri- it. But nothing's changed. Nobody's told him to stop. We have seen his antics for years, and okay. he hasn't changed. All right. Well, okay. So again, we're going to compare comparables. LeBron James is in the argument of the greatest players of all time. He's an NBA player, not a college basketball player. And oh yeah, by the way, everyone, everyone makes fun of and critiques his complaining, his theatrics, his flopping. He's called the flop when I could defend a lot of those times the reaction is slightly delayed in real time, okay, in super slow motion. And oh yeah, by the way, he's also LeBron James and like and look, I have a problem with people like you can't criticize LeBron James. Of course you can. Right? Did you not just the say San that Antonio, the coach the San Antonio, should stop that for Caitlin Clark? Like somebody should nip that in, in the bud? in college. It's different. She is the, the biggest star right now. I got now. it. I got it. Like everybody I, who knows the name LeBron the, James knows the, the, the name the biggest, Caitlin Clark. I could go through the biggest stars in college yeah, basketball I, Right, right history. now. Right, we're talking about in this moment right now. No, 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 no. I'm, no, I'm but, comparing comparables. Okay? This is... Like, you know when you buy a house and you compare comps and you got to do houses in your neighborhood and somebody picks one like two towns over and you're like, yo, that's not the same house. Okay? So all you can compare with is superstar men's basketball players in college basketball. Right? People who I disagree. Tra- I, just, I disagree. Okay? Doug McDermott <laughs> is the last guy to have this sort of effect on college basketball. Doug McDermott and Jimmy, Jimmer Fredette. Dougie did, Fresh. Did they do any of it? No. None of it. None of it. And they were a thing. They were a huge thing. Zach Eady is the two-time national player of the year. Now, is he criticized every time he plays? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he travels three seconds. He pushes off. Like, and again, all people are critical of him is his play. And look, he's a little bit of a bully. Like, he doesn't talk that much trash. He just stand, looks down at people and walks through them. But there are people eviscerate him on social media and the media over the way in which he plays, not the way in which he carries himself. And he takes a savage beating when he played and they played grambling in the first round. He's got scratches all down his arms, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So did anyone say like, dude, that dude's taking a beating? No, they're just critical of him. Okay. Did he react? Did he tell any of those guys from grambling to F off? Or the official who wasn't calling all those fouls, F you. Of course he didn't. That's not how you purport yourself. That's not how Matt Painter allows you to behave. In coaching, you either coaching it or allowing it. I understand what you're saying about the NBA. And by the way, the complaining about the officiating, we complain about the complaining every year. Everybody does. So for you to say no one says that, not true. But it's nothing's changed. It's just like normal. That's what is frustrating. So no, it's not of, true. The NBA actually put in rules but, where you can't. Yeah, you, we can. Put and in and, rules and what do we do? What do we do as the media? As the media, we're like, oh, I can't believe he gave him a T for looking at him sideways. Like, no, they told you we want to cut this stuff out because nobody likes it. But when somebody says nobody likes the way in which she's acting, you're like, oh, you're a male chauvinist pig. Like, no, no, no. Nobody likes the way she's acting. No one 
in basketball, men or women, college or pro, tells an official to F you, and we go like, it, you, know, it, it, you don't understand. Like, no, no, I do understand. I know the sport. I know both women's and men's basketball, and that's not acceptable. And for it to be acceptable is a major problem with the idea of creating some sort of uh, equality between men's and women's. Because our inability to be rightfully critical of performance and actions is the ultimate thing in what allows you to be equal. You're never going to be equal financially because people don't like to watch it on the same level. It's just not. It doesn't matter. Okay? Is it doing well? It's doing way better than before. Most of those programs aren't making money, but that's not even part of the argument. In terms of equal and how we view it and evaluate it and analyze it, if we can't be critical when they are not be behaving at the pro at the proper level, at especially when they're in this spotlight, then you're you're you all you're doing is recreating what you're trying. You say you're trying to get out of, which is like, hey, we don't want to be treated different. Yes, you do. Everything. It doesn't matter what you say. What you're doing is you're saying, hey, you can't be critical of us. You have to only support us. You have to have loving praise for us. And the second that you're in any way critical of us, we're done with you. You're a male chauvinist. You don't like women's sports. You're anti-women's sports. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. All right, sorry we went long. That was really good from you. We can also agree to disagree, right? It's also part of this deal. Give me your thoughts. At Gottlieb Show Twitter, at Gottlieb Show Instagram. And hey, here's the bigger part that you should take away from it. I watched. I watched. But if you want people to follow women's basketball, you got to get them to watch a second and a third time and watch the other games, not just Caitlin Clark.